This is WDG Underground Columbus, home of the unsigned artists. And this show is Big C in the Morning. This is the Friday morning show that starts your Friday morning off right in your weekend early. How is everybody doing today? I am I am tired. I will admit that. I am tired. But uh, I'm going to try and, you know, you know, get through it without yawning and such. So, um, yeah, um. I got a lot of sleep last night. I got a lot of good sleep last night. I just don't know why I'm still tired. It's a very, very, very confusing scenario. But anyways, I'm not going to yawn. I almost yawned that once. But uh, yeah, anyways, let's let's just move on. And I got two topics to talk about today. So um, let's talk about today's first topic. Okay, so the first topic is... Interviews, like job interviews. Now, as you know, there's been a lot of, you know, job openings since this pandemic um, hit. And um, basically, there's a lot of jobs out there for people to, you know, partake in. And, you know, this pandemic, like, made people lose their jobs or... Maybe they just, you know, put, like, put their job on hold and or, you know, uh, just made it completely virtual. So, um, yeah, and uh, people want to, uh, you know, um, they, they might need a new job or something. So, and, like, you reply, yeah. So when you see a job that you might be interested in or you like, boom, you apply. And then they, like, email or call you and say, hey, come down for an interview. And you're like, okay. Now, I feel like the interview portion, like, interviews in general, like, for jobs, I think that's, like, the toughest part because you got to do so much stuff. Oh, and we got a comment already uh, from... DJ Frost, he says, good morning to you. Good morning, DJ Frost. Good morning, Mr. DJ Frost. Yeah. It's great that you can tune in. Uh, but, yeah, back to what I was saying. Um, interviews. Um, they're kind of like the toughest part of trying to get a job. Because you got to do all this stuff. You got you to gotta dress nicely you have to, you know, have good hygiene and stuff. It's just a lot. And that's why I'm here to talk about them today. So, basically, what makes a successful interview? Well, I just technically just told you the first two. Dressing nicely, and then, um, you know, good hygiene. Now, the second part is, you gotta talk short and you gotta talk like, um, like you know what you're talking about. So you can't really like confuse the guy that's giving the interview. So basically, when I mean keep it short, I mean don't go into like a forty-page essay stating like who you are, where did you come from, like what country or you know what state or you know what region of a particular area in a city is so like don't give them like a full story on you just keep it simple like work base like work basics like what did you used to work in what did you used to do and like what are your like other credentials and stuff so basically you want to keep your interview, like, as short as possible without confusing the the interviewer. Because you are being interviewed, making you the interviewee. So basically, just say, oh, I've been working for this company for about this amount of years. Or I've been working at this radio station for this amount of years. Or this news station for this amount of years. Basically, you want to keep it in the numbers. I've learned this in school. You want to keep it with the numbers. Numbers actually work. They actually do work. Because 
if you provide like a number, any number, it'll get you like it'll get like the guy giving the interview, the interviewer hooked up on you. It's it's kind of like fishing. Like the um the uh information is like the bait. And you want to draw the big fish, which is the interviewer or the company, to that bait and get it hooked on it. Because the bait is is hooked onto the hook and you cast out that bait and you wait for the interviewer to take the bait. It's kind of like fishing. I, I, I think interviews are really kind of like fishing. Because you got to have good information if they want to be, you know, you know, be interested in you. Be like, hey, this is a, this is a really interesting guy or gal. So, yeah, you got to have, like, numbers in, in your interview. Like, state how many years you've been, oh, let's say, host of a radio show. State how many times you, how many shows you've done. State how many commercials you've done. State how many, you know, other things that you've done, like movies, directing roles, producing roles, special effects roles. Basically a lot of like that. A lot, a lot of stuff like that. Because odds are you've probably done the job like more than once because it is it is a very very important thing that you have numbers because if you don't have numbers then they're probably not going to hire you also another thing is is to Identify your weaknesses and, and like, strengths. Weaknesses and strengths is the next thing. Obviously, some people have strengths and some people have weaknesses. Well, basically, all people do. And you want to label, make your strength as, you know, as, you know, something that you do on a normal basis. Like, it could be, like, you can... Um, like taking something that you've already done, let's say, um, for a radio show host, you could say their strength is, you know, being a radio show host. Seriously, it's easy. All you have to do is just say, hey, my strength is being on an on higher personality because, because I can blah, 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 blah. That's basically what you say. Like, what makes you, what makes you being an on-air personality, like, really, really good? And then, your sh- your weaknesses. Basically, you want to answer this in the similar form of your strength. Basically, you want to, like, incorporate what you said on your strength, but mix it up a little. But not too much. Just trying to, you know, make it sense. Like, have it make sense. Basically, if you say, like, oh, my strength is being an on-air personality, but my weakness is, you know, like, saying, you know, saying something that I might offend somebody by. Like, you could say, oh, I said this on the air, and then... A person came up to me and said, hey, I didn't think that was funny or, you know, entertaining. And then I would say, and then you'd be like, and and like, you had to like respond to this. Like, like, this, this weakness is very important because how you answer this weakness kind of lets you like know how you get the job. Basically, your weakness is like the... Defying moment of whether you get it, get the job or not. Basically, your weakness is like, oh, you know, like, say, oh, you, 
you said something on the air and people thought it wasn't funny or a particular person at your job said it wasn't funny. And so the thing you do is you apologize and then you work together to come to a compromise so you can win as a team. Basically, you want to get the person that was, you know, acting negatively on your on the thing you said or did or whatever to be on your side. Basically, you just say you apologize, you work together to find a compromise and then win. That's basically how you, that's basically the, the thing you do. Cuz you know, I had to I had to use some of that stuff a long, like, for for a couple, well, for maybe only one job. I had to use that for, like, one job for, well, the one job for, that's actually my current job. So, yeah. And, you know, basically, the thing is, you do not want to, you know, like, over-inform the interviewer, if you have like a lot of information for that, that interviewer, don't take it too far. Just label out maybe like two or three, like things you've done. Don't overload them with like 50 other facts or well-known things that you did. Cause a lot of times they'll be like, they'll be like this. They'll be like, uh, huh, uh, huh. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. That, that's what they'll do. They'll just snooze on you. They'll snooze on you, and you'll lose. That is the term. Snooze, you lose. They snooze, you lose. So basically, you want to... Make sure they're still, you know, paying attention to you. Because if you're not, if they're not, if they're not like paying attention to you, they'll be just like, oh, yeah, yeah, what, whatever. Oh, what's this over there? They'll be looking for another person to have this job. So that's very important. Always keep the guy interesting. Don't just, you know. Put all these things out and be like, "Boom, here it is," because he, because they won't know what to, which one to start. And then you know they'll start asking questions like, "How good are you with you know um, equipment? How good are you at you know particular applications?" Now, how I would answer this um, question is, just say um. That you know the material, but you need, like, a little more work or probably... Actually, no, that wouldn't be good. Um, Just say... Oh, man, this is tough for even me to figure out. Just say, you know, use the numbers. You, you've you had this much experience with this and this much experience with this. And you're trying to, you know, improve your art. Because what you do is like an art. Like, what I'm doing. Like, broadcasting to you live. This is an art. Now, you're probably like, how is this an art? Well, being a host takes some creativity and, you know, a lot of other stuff. And you just gotta, boom, cram it into one, just, boom. Because seriously, trying to come up with topics for the show is a little bit of a creative art. Because why? It's, you know, it, it's tough to come up with show ideas. Like one time, like one day you'll be like, oh, I don't have a show idea. But if you try really hard and create that one topic, one or two topics that you want to talk about on a show for like an hour or two, then boom. You got him. You, you completely got it. And uh, yeah, basically, try to make sure your, your experience is interesting without, you know, really, you know, like shooting yourself in the foot. Basically, you just got to, you know, um, just completely 
be like, um, gotta be like completely calm, completely focused, completely, you know, on the mark. You gotta be like, hey, here's what I've done. I've done this. I've done, I've worked a, a lot with this application for this amount of years. I worked on this thing for this amount of years. I've been on board operator for this amount of years, this amount of years. This it all comes down to the numbers. Numbers equals job, secu- job secureness. Like you lock down the job. So very important. Very important. Oh, we got a comment from DJ Frost. He says, you only tell them what they want to know, nothing more. Yes. Basically, don't tell your don't tell your life story. Don't talk about your family. Don't say, like, oh, I've got this amount of kids, this amount of kids. Just be like, you know, here's what I've done. I've been at this radio station for this amount of years. I've been, you know, I've been, you know, working on this show for this amount of years. I've been the producer for this amount of years. Basically, your weakness and your strengths, all that good stuff. You just don't want to, you know, boom, put out your autobiography out there. Don't do not do that. And uh, DJ Frost also says, don't be cocky. I know what you're capable of capable of doing yes that's also another thing you don't want to be too confident see if you go in there and be like yo what's up i i know i'm gonna get this job so here's all my information you know here's what i've done it it was so cool and stuff don't say that they'll be like oh so you think you're mr cool think you're gonna get the job well nope out of here Oh, yeah, and uh, DJ Frost labeled out in a, a very important uh, piece of info. Keep eye contact. You don't want to keep your eyes from, you know, wandering around like, where am I? Where, where, where is this place? What, what, how, how, wow, this is, wow. You always want to make eye contact with the person you're being interviewed by. Because if you drift a lot, they'll be like, yeah, this guy's probably not, you know, uh, paying attention to me. You always want to keep your eyes to the interviewer. Because, honestly, you need to focus on the person that is directly across from you. It's very important. And, oh, DJ Frost also said don't move... Don't move around and sit still. Uh, basically, uh, what DJ Frost is saying is you shouldn't move around. If you move around a lot, they'll be like, you okay? And you're probably not going to get the job. So basically, you should sit still, still as a statue. And just, you know, give you give them their Give the interviewer your undivided attention. Take a deep breath in and out or just breathe in, breathe out, and just pay attention and just, you know, answer the questions when it's, when they ask you to answer or or when they ask you a question. You see, if you don't, then oops. Probably not going to get the job. Now, after the interview, they'll be like, well, this has been very interesting. And, the, and they'll say, we'll contact you and, uh, you know, we'll keep in touch and see if we can get you in for possibly another interview. Because usually, um, sometimes they'll, you should ask, well, sometimes you should actually ask, will there be like another interview? And be like, yeah, there may be another interview. Or, like, yeah, there's, there will be another interview. We'll call you and schedule time and date. Because, um... <coughs> excuse me. Because, um... 
sometimes you'll they'll you know call like call you or maybe they'll just ask you for a second interview because that's when they start getting interest in you because technically what I've learned interviewing is like a date like <coughs> excuse me if you don't like ask questions during like a date like how your day was going and stuff and all this other stuff odds are there won't be a second date for you and odds are, if you don't ask questions, and that's also important, you need to ask questions uh, during the interview, like what this job is about, how how long this job is, you know, been going, or like how is the job, like you know, working, or how it works and stuff. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Basically, good questions like that will obviously make them in more interested in you. Always asking the uh, interviewer questions. It's very important that you do that. And it'll even get them more hooked up on you. And then they'll, like, say, hey, where can I have... And you might not even ask, hey, will there be a second interview? And they'll be like, yeah, there will be a second interview. So, yeah. If you ask that question, and you like, you know... Oh, man, I'm yawning already. Great. So, yeah, if you ask that question, and you've been asking questions and all that good stuff during your interview, you may have a chance at a second interview, and or may have a chance at, you know, getting a job. And also, another important thing is, like, you know, before the interview starts, you should ask, will there be somebody else joining us? And sometimes, an interview might say, yes, there will be somebody joining us, or, you know... Somebody that they know might be, you know, swooping in saying hi and stuff. Maybe asking you a couple of questions. So, yeah, there might be another person coming in out of random. Like, coming into the room out of randomness to ask you questions. And you got to be prepared to give them your undivided attention and answer those questions. Professionally and not cocky at all. So, yeah. There could be a second person (laughs) possibly interviewing you. And you gotta, you know, answer their questions. And then finally, the cherry on top of the Sunday that is the interview process, is basically, you know, thanking them again and, you know, giving them a firm handshake. Like, you should have a firm handshake at the beginning and at the end. Like, don't be like firm, like, well, well, you gotta be firm. You gotta be firm, like, yeah, like, firm, like, you're not squishing too hard. If you squeeze too hard, then yeah, you're probably overdoing it. Just be like, hmm, and then, boom, you got a second review or you got the job. And also, it's very important that you write a thank you note at the after you have a interview basically saying hey thank you for interviewing me it's great talking to you and i hope that you know i get a chance to get a, get to work with you or have a chance for another interview and then you say thank you again and then sincerely your name your name and then you take that card put it in an envelope and mail it out to your interviewer and be like hey this is pretty nice i should I should hire that guy, or I should, you know, just completely interview interview him for a second time, because that's, that's basically important. Always write your thank you notes. And, you know, I just remembered something. I gotta write thank you notes for my Christmas presents. Well, then. This is why you always remember to write your thank you notes. Uh-huh. Three months after Christmas, I gotta write, I gotta start writing my thank you notes. I think I have like two people to thank for my thank you notes. I gotta write them before, you know, my birthday, and it's, 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 it's in two months, so I, I've gotta, I gotta work on it. I gotta work on that. So yeah, I gotta work on those notes. Work on those thank you notes. All right. Um, I think that will be it for that topic, so yeah.
We're done with topic number one. Which means it's time for us to go to break. But when we come back, guess what? I'm bringing back sports. So, yeah, we're going to talk about sports, specifically March Madness. Because it's almost time, folks. It's almost time. And, in fact, the Madness almost kind of started already. So, yeah. March Madness, we're talking about it. So you don't want to miss that. All right, time to get a break. This is Big C in the Morning on WDG Underground Columbus, home of the unsigned artist. Now here's a mirror of the song stressed with Suitcase. We'll be right back. WUDG Underground Columbus, where your favorite independent unsigned artist lives. What I enjoy most about Ohio Media School is that we are able to get connections with the outside world, with the real media. Um, I enjoy getting to know different people that are already doing what I want to do. And a uh, special shout out to Andy B, special shout out to Jay Love, and also Young Nisa.
are back on WDG Underground Columbus, home of the Unsigned Artists, and this is Big Z in the Morning. Now it's time for our second topic of the day. Today we're going to talk about March Madness. If you don't know what it is, it's basically the time of the month where, you know, it's time for some crazy stuff to happen in basketball. And, oh boy, it a lot of crazy stuff has happened. Like... Um, you know, uh, like the, the, the craziest thing that happened yesterday, Duke and Kentucky lost in their tournaments, which means we won't be seeing Duke or Kentucky in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1976. And if you want to know how long that is, that is 45 years, people. Yes. The 45 year drought is over. We finally get to see no Duke or Kentucky in the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Because, um, you know, they've been in that tournament for a long time, for a long stretch. And, you know, basically, it, it, it's, it's been about, it's been about time that we had like some kind of difference in the NCAA men's basketball tournament, because we always seen Duke and Kentucky as like the favorites of this tournament. Like seriously, every time they get in, they're like, we're like, you know, why, why are you in this tournament? You shouldn't be in the tournament because I mean, come on, you've been winning a lot. Like seriously during, you know, this, you know, the start of the new millennium, Duke has won a bunch of, of men's bat like Duke and Kentucky, they've been winning a bunch of you know men's basketball titles, well men's basketball championships. They've been winning a lot of national championships, and you know, in the even in the nineties, they've been they've been winning championships. Like seriously, it's been like Calipari and and Coach K. They. They've been around this sport for a very, very long time. And it's very, very, uh, very annoying. Because let me tell you something. Them being around for, you know, in this tournament for, like, so long. Like... It begs the question, do you think that they, that they, uh, they need to retire or like, seriously, it's about that. It's about getting to that time. Like coach K, he probably doesn't have, you know, a lot of momentum left in the tank. He's won like a national championship in three different decades. He's won in the nineties, the two thousands, the 2010s. He has yet to win a championship in 2020. Last year, there was no championship game because of COVID. But finally, after our one-year absence, we get it back. And Coach K still can't get his 2020, his 2020's title. Or titles in 2020. I don't, I don't care which one you choose. It, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, basically... Madness has already been raining. Maryland beat Michigan State yesterday, uh, which is very crazy. Um, Syracuse almost upset Virginia. Um, today there was supposed to be some. There was supposed to be like a semifinal game between Georgia Tech and Virginia, but unfortunately, Virginia had to opt out because you know. They somehow got COVID. They got a player or players or how many people with infected with COVID. So that means Georgia Tech gets an automatic automatic W and heads to the finals of the ACC tournament to verse either North Carolina or Florida State. And that's crazy. Like Virginia Tech, the top. Basketball school in the ACC 
can no longer play for an ACC tournament title because of COVID. Now, I saw, like, Duke and... Like, Duke, they had a... They actually had to, you know... Give for now. This happened to Florida State yesterday. They had to give Florida State the semi. They're just like the semifinal spot to verse North Carolina. Like Duke could have won and versed their rival North Carolina, but no. Unfortunately, one of their players got COVID, and thus this ended Duke's hopes of getting back into the NCAA tournament because Duke right now is you know unranked. Like a majority of the top twenty-five in like the AP polls or the coaches poll will get in the tournament. So basically people who are not like in the tournament or, or, or the teams that are like doing bad, they need to win their conference tournament or they might not, you know, get in. And, and in like another tournament, North Folk State got to advance to the, to their tournament championship game, the MA the MEAC, the MEAC conference, Norfolk State got to go into the finals because one of their players, well, because, well, actually, Norfolk State got to go because North Carolina a and had, had COVID issues. So Norfolk State gets to go play for a conference tournament title. Now, and but there have been a lot of upsets, like regular non-COVID, and it's been interesting. Georgetown upset Villanova. The one Villanova has been winning that tournament, the Big East tournament, for three straight years. And for Patrick Ewing, the head coach of Georgetown, and also former player and NCAA champion with the Georgetown Hoyas, he led Georgetown to a victory over Villanova, 14th ranked Villanova in the AP poll. And that's pretty amazing. What, what, what Patrick Ewing is doing for Georgetown is truly amazing. He is like making the program what it was a winning program. And I think Georgetown might rule the big East this year. I mean, it's a possibility. It is a definite possibility. And I'll be rooting for Georgetown to uh, take the win the Big East all this year. Well, the Big East tournament this year. Um, other things: Mississippi State upset Kentucky, which means Kentucky is automatically out of the tournament. But then again, a lot of people are wrong, so they they might be they might be out, might not be out. Who knows? Uh, wow. Miami, they were they're actually a pretty good basketball school. They got beat by Georgia Tech, and now look at Georgia Tech; they're already in the championship. They're already in the ACC championship. Like, my goodness, people! My goodness. Kansas almost lost to Oklahoma because uh, Oklahoma they're actually pretty good. They actually had like one player who, ah. Uh, Buddy healed. It's either Buddy healed or Buddy Hiled. Um, he used to play for Oklahoma, and that's kind of like how they got you know Oklahoma to be a basketball school. Like some players, unlike playing for the basketball team at a particular college, or a number amount of players playing at that college, they basically influence other, you know, basketball players that are, like talented well-skilled basketball players to go play for those schools because the more those players go and play for a particular college, the more possibility they can go to, you know, maybe, you know, the tournament championship or maybe an NCAA playoff appearance. And um, it's very important for these schools to, you know, get the best players around the country to go to have them come and play at their school. And uh, Texas Tech and Texas. That was a pretty interesting game. Texas Tech almost upset Texas. And, uh, yeah. Just a lot of madness going around here.
So yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. It is pretty pretty crazy. Now for coming upcoming games, <laughs> I know it's not really March Madness right now, but this is what we'll, we're calling this conference madness, or conference March Madness, because anything can happen. Like seriously, anything can happen. Cleveland State won their conference, and they got and they got an automatic bid to the tournament. So, yeah, I never thought Cleveland State would win, but they won. And uh, they're playing for a. They're going to be playing for a championship. Well, holds yeah, a national championship. It's just so crazy. So, we got the Big Ten quarterfinals today. Ohio State's playing at two against Purdue, and that's why I'm wearing my Ohio State basketball jersey today. Got to represent the Buckeyes. And um, I think Ohio State might have a shot. They're a one-point favorite because, you know, they kind of almost choked against Minnesota. So I think Ohio State will, you know, fix those errors and they will get a win against Purdue. So, yeah. And then you got Maryland and Michigan. I got I actually got Maryland to upset Michigan because if Maryland can upset Michigan State, then you can obviously upset Michigan. So, yeah. I've got Maryland upsetting Michigan, um, Mississippi State, and Alabama. I got Alabama just because, you know, just like the football Alabama, like Alabama's football team, um, they're overpowered. So, yeah. Um, a lot of other, uh, ooh, Georgetown and Seton Hall. Seton Hall is a three point favorite, but I think Georgetown's going to. You know, beat them. There, there's no way Seen Hall can, you know, win this. I mean, Patrick Ewing is coaching. And basically, Patrick Ewing has a plan. And he's going to win. Uh, then you got Rutgers and Illinois. I'd be surprised if Rutgers upset Illinois. I would be surprised. Um... Uh, I thought there was supposed to be like a fourth Big Ten game somewhere. Oh, yeah. Wisconsin and Iowa. Yeah, I think Iowa might win. Just because they got that one good player. That Luka guy. I heard they were going to retire his number after this season. Like, wow. Wow. Now, here's the, here's the thing. About I want to talk about that. I would like to talk about that Iowa guy. He um, what's his real name? Luca Garza. Now, here's the thing. Like, athletes in general, they get their numbers retired after you know. You know they won like championships for this school. They've won, like, conference titles for the school. Like, they either win, like, national championships, conference championships, or they break, like, school slash, you know, national records. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think, like, right now in his career, like, this is so early, like... You would, you would get, like, players, you know, like some college players, you know, get their numbers retired after, you know, maybe they've gone off to play in the NBA, win a few championships, or maybe, you know, just, you know, win. Basically, these numbers retire after you graduate college, not after the season. To be honest with you guys, I just... I, I'm happy that he he's got his, he's getting his number retired, but I feel like they're doing it too early. Like he's just starting; like his career has already started, and you know, in the middle of your career, having your number retired already, like like this is the end of his college career. 
I think he's like a senior, right? He's, he's got to be. Yeah, he's a senior. And already they're retiring his number after this season. I feel like they're jumping the gun. Like, what if, I'm not saying it will happen, like, what if in the NBA gets drafted by a team that really idolizes talent and they think that, you know, he that he can bring his team to an NBA title and he becomes a bust. And I will be, will be like, why did we do this? Like, why did we retire his jersey that early? Because, I don't know, guys. I feel like jersey retirement should come, like, after you're done with basketball. You're done with the sport entirely. Not after you know, just one career. Like, like imagine this. If, like, say Caleb Wesson. Caleb Wesson, he was one of the greatest. He's, he's in fact, one of the greatest um, basketball players to play for Westerville South. What if they just, what if Westerville South just retired his number after his last season? After he got voted Mr. Basketball Ohio and in, in like the AP, the state AP, you know, player of the year. What if they just retired his number like right now? Like after those awards and after his high school career. And then, you know, something happens like, you know, he starts not playing as usual and then. Boom, his, boom, that happens. Like, he's not playing like he used to play at the high school level. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's something that you just don't do. Like, you just don't retire, like, immediately. Like, retire that number immediately. And, you know, I'm glad, you know, Caleb Wesson did really well in high school. I'm glad, you know, Caleb Wesson, he, he done so well in college. And as much as I hated him declaring for the draft, I'm glad he's, you know, signing with a NBA G League team and, you know, playing at the level he wants to compete in. He wants to become a NBA legend. He wants to win championships. He wants to be on a, on a franchise team that can, you know, do that. But to be honest with you, I don't think... To be honest, well, here's the thing. Numbers shouldn't be retired that early. They should be retired when they need to be retired. Possibly after their career fully comes to an end. Not when one part of a career comes to an end. That's just my opinion. I know a lot of people got other opinions, but just, just don't take it with a grain of salt. Which means don't be salty or don't be, you know, mad or anything. These are just my opinions. I just hate that, you know, retiring numbers early. Like, really early. I mean, for bowling, we had to, like, well, there hasn't been, like, any bowling numbers retired. Because I think they did away with numbers, like, a while ago. There, there used to be numbers, like, players having numbers for bowling, but they don't do it anymore. And in fact, they got like three numbers retired already at the palace for Westworld South. So, um, yeah, um, <laughs> I, I, I actually wish we had numbers. It would have been fun, but eh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, um, yeah, March Madness, it's going to be fun. Watch the conference championships. Watch Ohio State play. Today at 2 p.m. on Big Ten Network, it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. And hopefully the Buckeyes get the dub. So, yeah. And also look out for some possible upsets. There could be some possible upsets. All right. I'm done talking about basketball. It is time for us to take our final break. But when we come back, 
I'll end the show. I will end the show. Yeah. Or I might talk about something else for a short while. So, yeah. Anyways, time for a break. This is Big C in the Morning on WDG Underground Columbus, home of the Unsirs. Now, here's Renee Dion with 99. We'll be right back. There's nothing I can do To be lost by you No matter where I go You call me Back on WDG Underground Columbus, home of the Unsigned Artists, and this is Big C in the Morning. I just got some breaking news, folks. Breaking news, Tom Brady just got a four-year extension. Which means, sadly, the Tom Brady saga is continuing. Four years. Four more years of Tom Brady in Tampa Bay and in the NFL. Which means... He'll be 47 at the end of his contract. That's right. 47 years old. He He's going to be 
47 years. Well, technically, yeah, yeah, 47 years old when his contract ends. So 47 or 48. Now, guys, let me tell you something. Tom Brady, he's been around the sport for a long, long time. He's already 43. He's going to be 44 in August. And how do I know this? Because I looked it up on Wikipedia. And to be honest with you guys, he's won seven Super Bowls already. He's won seven NFL championships. He almost has more professional sports championships than the Browns. The Browns have eight world titles. And, you know, Bill Belichick has eight rings because he's got two with New York, the New York Giants, and six as a head. Two of them were, the two from New York were assistant coaches, was being the assistant coach, and then, well, actually, the, the defense with coordinator. And then his six rings were for being the head coach of New England. So, yeah. Tom Brady is kind of trying to be like, you know, that one sports athlete that just never quit. This, it, he kind of reminds me of Richard Petty, the NASCAR driver, the king. Uh, Richard Petty, he won like over 200 races. Like, he's won over 200 NASCAR races and, like, seven championships. And the fun fact is, Richard Petty didn't even retire until he was, like, 55. Seriously. He did not retire till he was, like, 55. And, you know... Richard Petty, he started his, he started his NASCAR career in 1958 and ended it in 1992. So 1992 minus 1958. Okay, so Richard Petty has been around his sport NASCAR for 34 seasons. Tom Brady is in his he just got done with his 21st season. And now he's entering his 22nd season. Now will Tom Brady play 34 seasons? Probably not. But if he does, I would just like to say to his face, bro, why are you trying to become an unstoppable machine? Why are you trying to become a Terminator? Seriously. Tom Brady is like the Terminator. He never gets broken down. He never gets old. And he has enough strength to carry a team to a championship or a win. Seriously. I think Tom Brady is secretly a Terminator. Hey, I, I could be right. I could be right. Because, you know, those Terminators, they, they are pretty strong and, you know, cybernetic. So maybe maybe he's a robot. I don't know. Tom Brady is just not human. He's just not human. Not even human. And, and you know, I, I don't like Tom Brady. I prefer, you know, a quarterback like that's, you know, tough and stuff. Like Justin Fields. That's that's a good quarterback. Not Not Tom Brady. Mainly because he went to that school up north. So, yeah. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is my time. It's time to, you know, it's time for me to go. And you're probably like, thank you. Or you're probably sad. But but anyways, that is my time. I got to go do stuff. Next show, we're going to have two more topics to talk about. If I can figure out what those two topics are. I will let you guys know, okay? All right. So, yeah, guys, um, that's going to be it for today's show. Thank you all for tuning in. So, yeah. This has been Big C in the Morning on WDG Underground Columbus, home of the unsigned artist. My name is Big C, and I am out of here.
Wait, did I just say out of ear or out of here? I think I said out of here. Out of here. I didn't say out of ear. So, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, guys, have a great rest of your Friday. Have a great weekend. And also, uh, go Bucks since they're playing in the Big Ten tournament. So, yeah. Got to root the, for the Buckeyes. So, yeah. Anyways, see you all next week. <laughs>